Welcome back to Robert's Reviews. So excited to be here. I hope you are too. I would like to give a couple announcements before we move into the review for today. And the first announcement is, look at my new microphone. Huh? 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 It's pretty great. Um, I like it a lot. I hope it works better. The issue that I had was, uh, I, I seemed very quiet in my videos, which is good, because I don't, don't want to be too loud, but, like, I had to wear headphones when I, like, was editing, so I'm hoping this will solve that problem, so hopefully you'll, you'll be able to hear me better when you're not wearing headphones, and hopefully I'll be more clear than when I am in my other videos. Um, second note, I'm in a new place, because I'm in college, and they moved me because I requested to stay, so now we've got a cooler background, as you can see, we've got spider-man stuff and then in the background over here we have um, a bunch of toys we have luigi ant-man uh, iron man black panther black widow and groot back there just chill i also have a pop figure back there that's that's captain america and a variety of books which is actually mostly scripts but figured you guys should know that i am in a new room so it'll have its new stuff like maybe you'll hear crows in the background sometimes because i'm right next to a tree but i like the tree it's a happy tree uh the lorax speaks for the trees maybe i'll review the lorax if i'm gonna review the lorax comment down below i think that's on netflix now too so i guess it wouldn't be too difficult it's got zach efron in it too if you're wondering why i keep all these random bloopers in where i stumble over my words and I get off topic is because, A, I get off topic a lot, so that's a lot of editing for me, and I don't like editing very much. I do edit my videos, and I do cut some stuff out, uh, so you'll see some jump cuts every now and then, and that's just me when I screw up so bad, like if I totally mess up the date of the movie, which I have written down in my notes, um, then that's a problem. I would show you my notes, but it has my rating on it, and I don't want to spoil anything, but it's literally just the name of the movie, the year the director, the writer, and the actress I'm going to talk about, and my rating. That's literally all that I have on my notes, which is why I get off topic so often, because I don't have a script. It's all unscripted, so you guys get to see my actual thoughts as I experience them and how, as I decide to tell you about them. Um, trying to think of what other announcements I have. I'm hoping to get into some more TV show stuff going on. I mean, I've got the MCU TV shows. I'm going to be reviewing it at some point in the near future. After Iron Man 3, I believe, is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1. So I will be reviewing some TV shows. Um, and don't forget, there's anything you want me to review. Literally anything. It doesn't have to be movies or it doesn't have to be TV shows. It can be literally anything you want me to look at and review and talk about my thoughts on. Drop it in the comments below. I'll give it a look. And uh, at some point, I will eventually be reviewing whatever you put down there. So I've got a lot on my list and I'm really excited to talk about this movie in particular. Oh wait, one more thing. See, another off topic thing. Look what I can do with my microphone. I can echo. Pretty cool, huh? Might do that at some point in the near future. I don't actually know how long that echoed, which is why there's probably an awkward pause there. I just wanna make sure that's off before I it is off. I want to make sure it was off because then I would have to redo the entire video if the whole thing was an echo and that would be ridiculous which is going to happen in the near future or somewhere. I know it. I know it's going to happen. I know I'm going to sit here. There's going to be a crazy echo and I'm going to have to redo the entire video and I'm, mm, no, not going to happen. I'm, I'm smarter than that. I'm smarter than that. So today we are going to be reviewing the movie Captain America the First Avenger. This movie was made in 2011. It is the first Captain America movie in the so far trilogy of movies. It was directed by Joe Johnston and it was written by Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely. This movie was great. I saw this movie and I was like, this is the coolest thing that's ever happened because I didn't like Captain America very much. Um, I didn't know a lot about Captain America. I didn't, I didn't read like Captain America comics or anything. I was way more interested in the Spider-Man comics. Um, I read a lot of Spider-Man comics when I was younger, but I never really got into Captain America, um, until the movie came out, and I watched the movie, and I was like, wow, that was a cool story, 
I like it a lot because it feels more real to me than some other, you know, uh, Marvel movies we'll get into in the future. Like, Thor just doesn't seem realistic to me as much as, you know, Iron Man does and as much as Captain America does. Iron Man could absolutely happen. That's the one, that's the one that everyone's like, wow, that could totally, absolutely happen. This one's pretty close. I mean, I feel like this is probably something that happened at some point. Somebody was like, let's just mess around with the serum and see what happens. They probably died instead of becoming a super soldier, but, you know, <sighs> happens. So I'll give you a brief overview of the movie. The movie starts off with Steve Rogers and his friend Bucky, and Steve is a tiny little dude. He's scrawny. He's like me when I was 11. I was so short and skinny, and now I'm big and fat. Um, I'm, I'm lovable. Steve was not lovable. He was a scrawny little guy who couldn't lift anything, couldn't do anything, got bullied a lot. But the one thing he had going for him was his reserve. He was strong in his heart. He he wanted to do what was right. He wanted to join the military and fight in the wars, uh, World War II, particularly in this one. And he wanted to go to war, and he wanted to help people on his side. He wanted to be a healer, whatever he could do. He, he tried so hard. And so he tried, and he tried, and he tried, and eventually he went through this program where this crazy doctor was like, I'm going to make you strong. And he was like, cool. So then he did, and he went to the super soldier program, and he became the first ever super soldier. And then he went on to destroy the Red Skull, who was the main villain for this movie. Now, the Red Skull is interesting because of the way they had to do it was so rough that it made the actor... Uh, you go weaving quit um the ad uh, the makeup made him quit we'll talk about that later um i hope that didn't that sound didn't pop up on here but it probably did happen anyway um bloopers um so then captain america basically is super cool and then he goes out and he does that but then at the end spoilers if you haven't seen this movie you're ridiculous you're you know nine years behind so i don't mind spoiling this movie for you as i get farther into these movies and as I get closer to movies that are actually in theaters, if theaters ever open up again. Um, I will do non-spoiler reviews, and I will do spoiler reviews. That way you can watch my reviews before you see the movie, or after, or if you don't mind spoilers. So, that's just something to look forward to in the future. But for now, I'm not going to worry about spoilers, because um, this is a nine-year-old movie. So, I don't feel bad. I think everyone in the world has seen this movie. But anyway, Captain America has to down the ship in the ocean because he runs out of gas basically after he kills red skull or i guess red skull kind of killed himself but um so he throws himself into the the water and the ice and then he gets frozen and then he wakes up what was it like 70 years 90 years i don't even remember he woke up a lot of years later in the present and um that's where he picks up his life and that's where he joins the avengers which is the next mcu movie we'll be reviewing and uh, this movie's really great. It doesn't sound great. The way I described it does not sound like it's the best movie in the world. But it really, it really is really solid. I liked it so much. And I will talk a little bit about why I liked it. Uh, there aren't a lot of negatives. So this will be one of my more overly positive reviews. Because I know that a lot of my reviews are kind of like, this is bad, blah, 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 blah. But this actually, there's a lot of really good stuff. And I like to talk about a lot of it. So, I like to talk about the directing and the writing first. First of all... Kudos to the directors, because they had to figure out how they were going to do all of this, because obviously they wanted Chris Evans to, you know, start off super small and skinny and then become super buff, but Chris Evans was neither of those before he started this. He had to train a lot to get super buff for this movie, but he couldn't shrink himself down and make himself short and skinny. There's no way he could have done that. So they had to, like, CGI his body. So what happened was they had a body double... And then what they did was they basically matched Chris Evans' personality feature traits and then shrunk them down to the size of a small person. And they had to do that for every frame of the movie that he was small, which was a quite a big chunk of the movie. I mean, that was like, I think, 45 minutes before we even get to see the actual Captain America. And that's really, really brave of the, of the writers and the directors to think that they can do that. And they did it. It worked really well for them. And, uh, kudos. 
Um, and overall, I think that the, the cool thing about the film was that it felt like a period film because I think it's important that a lot of directors understand that the aesthetic of the film has to be relevant to what we would have seen back then. This is a, as people don't like to think about it, I guess, this is really what it is, is it's a period drama. This happened at World War II, so they had to bring everything back there and they had to make it seem like it was World War II. It couldn't be set in present day. So they had to go back and they had to do that, which I thought was really interesting because I think that a lot of directors, particularly back in 2011, would have been like, ah, we'll just run it and it'll be fine, it'll look fine, everything's going to be fine. And they went back and they really changed everything so it looked like it was World War II time, um, which is really great because I don't think a lot of directors would have thought about it being a period drama. I mean, it's a superhero film, but they have to remember that more importantly than it is a superhero film, the bulk of the film is set during World War II, which is very different than where we are now. So kudos to those three wonderful people. Now let's talk about the actors real quick before I get into my final rating. Um, we have Chris Evans, of course, as Steve Rogers, Captain America. He's brilliant. He actually was in a Marvel film. Some I think most people know this, but maybe some of you don't. He was in the Fantastic Four before this. Um, and Sorry, I'm making a note to make sure I find a picture of that for you guys. Um, he was in the Fantastic Four, which tanked. I mean, that movie's awful. I will be reviewing that movie at some point, because after I do the AMC movies, I will do all of the, um, you know, the Fox films and all the X-Men films as well um, for you guys. But that movie was really bad, and he was the Human Torch, and he was funny. He was, he's a funny actor, but he didn't look good. He wasn't, like, super buff. So I guess they saw him in that film, and they were like, you know what, maybe he'd be good for Captain America. So they brought him in and they liked him a lot, and they trained him, so he's super buff. That's pretty much it. But Chris Evans is great in this movie. Um, something about Chris Evans that I think is cool, and we'll talk about this more in the Avengers review that I will have going on. I hope that's not too long. It'll probably be pretty long. But who knows? Um, Chris Evans is really good at demanding his presence. He's got that face where he's like, like, this is my time. This is my screen time. Um, which I didn't think he was going to have, because seeing him as, as a human torch is very different. He had this soft face, like, mm, you know, whatever's going to happen, he's going to happen. And as Captain America, he's really, really good. He knows that he's the boss, he is, he is the rescuer, the human tank. He's really great. Um, it was really great to, um, to see him transform into that character, which is really nice. Um, let's talk about Haley Atwell for a little second um, as Agent Peggy Carter. Uh, she did get her own television show. Um, I believe it was an ABC television show. And I will talk about that show in a couple weeks. Uh, but in this film, she is like the general, basically. Um, she eventually becomes Agent Pe Pe Peggy Carter when she joins um, what will become S.H.I.E.L.D. Um but she basically falls in love with Steve Rogers and it's very sad at the end of the film because Steve Rogers sacrifices himself <laughs> and it's very sad. It, it is pretty sad, but it gets better um, down the road. We'll, we'll discuss that in future films, but it does get better. Just know that it does get better. Um, and Peggy Carter is great because she is... A woman with such serious, like, ferocity. She's so ferocious. Like, that one time, there was that one scene where she walks into a guy and just smacks him. Because he's being disrespectful. And uh, she's really great. I mean, I honestly think that maybe it would have been cool to see her as Black Widow at some point. But I do understand why she was Peggy Carter. And she's great as Peggy Carter, let me tell you. She's great as Peggy Carter. Um, so definitely, definitely pay attention to her. She's not someone to be cast into the background she she owns every scene she's in um sebastian stan as bucky barnes um this is the one where we don't see him as the winter soldier so we just see him as regular old sebastian stan uh, bucky barnes no 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 messing around with the winter soldier crap yet um he's just his, he's just steve rogers his friend i mean he's just a good guy overall and he joins the army to try to fight and Halfway through the movie, he basically falls off a train and presumably dies, but we know it's different. 
uh, now, which we will get into in a different film review. But, um, I mean, Sebastian Stan isn't bad by any stretch of the imagination, but, I mean, I don't, I didn't really like his character in this film. I didn't like his character in any of the films, if I'm being honest. Um, I'm not a huge fan of The Winter Soldier. Um, he was in The Devil All the Time, and maybe you guys should watch that. Watch my review, too, because that movie is really, really good. You should check that out. Um, after you're done watching this, go watch my review for that, and then watch the film. It's really good. And Sebastian Stan's good in that movie as well. And he's, he's not bad. I mean, he's good. I like Sebastian Stan as Bucky Barnes. I just don't like Bucky Barnes that much. I think that he, especially in the beginning, he's kind of a boring character. And he's, you know, the, the attractive person that Steve is with. And, you know, they get girls together. And it's, eh, I mean, it's fine. It's not great. I mean, I feel bad when he dies, of course. But I don't feel overly depressed about the fact that he dies. If I'm honest. Um, and then finally, let's talk about Hugo Weaving as Red Skull, who is the big bad boss. Um, Toby Jones is also in this, um, and he plays somebody that we'll talk about um, in a later film. But I don't want to get into that right now because this film, this, this this video is already a little long. But Hugo Weaving as Red Skull is great. Oh my god! I mean, it was just perfect casting. I'm very sad he didn't come back, and here's why. For those of you who don't know why he didn't come back, he didn't come back because the makeup was ridiculous. I mean, uh, I mean, look at the Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, I feel bad for them. Like Dave Bautista has to go into makeup like crack ass at dawn in the morning, and he has to sit in makeup for like three hours. Hugo Weaving had to go for hours at a time, and Hugo Weaving is not the kind of person that likes to go to makeup. I mean, he likes to just go and act and get his job done so he can leave, um, which. Out of respect. But he was perfect for this film. I mean, really, I mean, his eyes are just like, ooh, like, wow, really, really good. Perfect casting for that part. And I am very sad that we don't get to see um, Hugo Weaving's Red Skull anymore after this. I mean, really, it was, he was really, really good. Unbelievable. Um, and with that, I think I've given enough information to justify why I'm going to give this movie an A. I didn't give it an A+, plus because I think they could have done more in the beginning. And here's why. So I love the beginning of the film, where, you know, Steve is trying to get um, into the army. And I think it would have been better for me if we saw more Bucky. Because when Bucky dies, the first time I watched this film, I was like, oh, who's Bucky again? I think we need to see more of Bucky at the beginning of the film. And honestly, the film could be a little longer, which I don't think I've ever said in, in any of these videos ever. Um, usually my movies are too long, which I will discuss. So a couple movies in the future that are a little too long. Um, and I think if they added a little bit more in the beginning with Bucky and with Steve, I think I would understand a little bit more about the relationship. I mean, I know a lot. We know that, you know, he he's always been around. He's always there to help. But I just feel like we were told that. We weren't really shown that. I wish we would, they gave us more opportunities to see Bucky come to the rescue for Steve. I think it would be better if we got to see some more of that. Which we did get a little bit, which is great. But I think we, if I got more of that, I would feel worse when Bucky falls off the train. Which is literally, I think, the only reason why I gave it an A and not an A+. Um, I do think you should see this movie. I mean, the, the Captain America movies are solid. They're all solid. Uh, most of them are solid. We'll get there. But definitely go check this movie out. Watch all the MC movies in order as I review them. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure that you like and comment and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Tell all your friends to subscribe. Tell your mom to subscribe. Tell your dad to subscribe. Tell anybody you don't like to subscribe. Tell everyone you do like to subscribe. You never just why well, don't you just tell everyone to subscribe? You know, throw it everywhere. Get everybody to subscribe. Um, and comment down below what you want me to review next, and I will I will add it to my queue. I have a long queue, but I will add it to my queue, and eventually you will get your review. So if there's anything you want me to see, react to, anything like that, drop in the comments below. Leave a comment and a like, and I will see you in the next movie. And in the meantime, keep watching films.